A friend of mine owns a restaurant, and our families have been close for 15 plus years. Prior to the pandemic, he had a successful restaurant in a great location. The last one and a half years have been horrible for him for obvious reasons. Just prior to the pandemic, we became 50-50 partners in a cafeteria business, targeting surrounding offices, housing 2,000 plus people. We entered a three-year lease valued at $1 million. When the pandemic came, we knew we were screwed. Almost all of our customers went work from home, so our plans were unattainable. We had to cancel and enter delinquency. The landlord hardballed us and demanded we paid. After round number one of negotiations, they wanted $200,000. I said no go and offered $80,000, take it or leave it. They reluctantly agreed. Around the same time, my friend was severely depressed due to the impact the virus had on his business. He told me he was going to sell his dream cottage which has been in his family's safe harbor for all these years. I suggested Airbnb as a way to generate cash instead. For transparency, there's a huge disparity between my friend's financial situation and mine. I own a successful business in a different industry, one that's actually thrived during the pandemic. I wanted to help. I promoted his food delivery business and bought hundreds of food packs from him to generate money for him and gave them away to my employees. I even offered him a loan, which he declined. Finally, I told my friend that I would pay up the whole $80,000 settlement myself. Then along came June. Pandemic restrictions were lifted and great weather kicked in, the perfect time to be a restaurateur. My friend's business was thriving again and I was so happy for him. He went from depressed state to hyper, working 14-hour days and making money again. Imagine my surprise when my friend told my wife he just bought a fancy new SUV. And not just any SUV, but the biggest one there is. A BMW X7 with a four-digit list price. Not jealous of the car in the slightest. My car's list price was twice as much. He should drive a Bentley if he can afford it. Around the time I settled, my friend asked my accountant if she, aka me, could pay his health insurance bills. Also, he tried to take $40,000 worth of kitchen equipment that my team secured after the settlement. Never paid a cent for any of it. My employee refused and told him he would need to ask me first, which pissed him off and he left. Oh, and he still owes me a few grand for a 2019 skiing vacation. I can't help it. I feel that he took advantage of me for personal gain. I also think he went nuts for spending so much money on a new car right after a pandemic that nuked his business and his savings. So am I the a-hole for avoiding my friend and not wanting to spend time with him? Particularly that we are now on vacation in the same hotel. It was his birthday yesterday and giving in to pressure. He walked into our hotel room and invited us in front of kids. Our families went to dinner at a nearby restaurant. I asked for two separate bills. Also, we didn't share a word during the entire meal. Not the a-hole. I am not even going to pretend I can understand having that much money in the first place. But to me, it seems very sketchy to be asking you for assistance in the same time frame as making exuberant purchases. Also, it's the morality of it. I asked a friend to help me out of a horrific situation once, and although he is my best friend and readily agreed, I insisted on a repayment plan because it's the right thing to do, or at least that's my opinion. If I were you, I would be candid with him about your concerns and feelings, and give him a chance to apologize before moving forward. It is not nice to have a friend take advantage of you, and it takes a great toll on your mental resilience. Not the a-hole. It sounds like he's taking advantage of you, although he may not realize it. You continue to be nice and bail him out, which is commendable, but he hasn't kept his ego in check and is now expecting things. Draw your line in the sand. Sit down and talk to him about these things. I'm 24 years old. I've been working at my grandpa's dealership as a salesman for a year now, and before that I worked in detail. About 10 years ago, my grandparents got divorced. My grandpa was having an affair with a woman that worked for him, and my grandma eventually found out and left him. It turns out he had a kid with her. Now they are married, and now has a 21-year-old son. I've known his son for a while now as we both work together. We get along and have a pretty good relationship. I know my grandpa always wanted a son, and he spoils him accordingly, which, again, doesn't really bother me. A year ago, I bought a new car from the dealership. I traded in my old one, got some money from my grandpa, and wound up with about $3,000 in car payments that I had to make. I had no problem with having to make the payments, and I just recently paid it off. I know my grandpa got his son a new car when he graduated high school, which was only a few years ago. 
Well, here's what pissed me off. My grandpa was bragging about the new Bentley he bought himself, and then a $90,000 Cadillac as a Christmas gift for his son. That made me a bit irritated. I never like to feel entitled to things, and I believe my grandpa can spend his money on what he wants, but I couldn't help but feeling pissed. I just couldn't believe that he had all that money for that, but I still had to make car payments. Like, if he can brag about buying his son that car, the least he could have done was taking care of his grandson's $3,000 in car payments. I don't want to sound entitled, but I'm the only grandchild he's close with. Hearing him brag about his new Bentley and his son's new car pissed me off. Am I the a-hole for feeling that if he had the money for all that, it's crappy to make me make these car payments? Edit. I'm not suggesting at all that I should get an equal split as his son. I would never expect anything like that. But if he had the funds to buy a 90000 car for his son, I feel like he could afford a $3,000 car payment for his grandson. Not the a-hole, and let me explain why. Because you are describing a feeling. You aren't an a-hole for having feelings. Now, if it was, am I the a-hole for demanding my grandfather pay my car payments because he bought his son a car, then you would be an a-hole. But not for a feeling. Nah. And Grandpa's not an a-hole for deciding how to spend his money. Not the a-hole. You're not entitled for wishing your grandpa would give you a little something if he can afford a $90,000 car for his son. But that's his money to spend, and you're not entitled to it. It sucks, but that's just life. Yes, the a-hole. You do sound entitled. You're not his son, you're his grandson. You're not entitled to the same level of monetary support. Yes, the a-hole. You don't want to sound entitled, but you do. You aren't entitled to his money. If he wants to give everything he has to his son, that's his problem, and you don't have a say in it. I mean, if my grandpa owned a car dealership, I think I'd probably wish that he'd gift the $3,000 remaining car payment to me. Especially since it sounds like you put a good chunk of money down. I'm 30, male, and my girlfriend is 26, female. Ever since I was in college, I grew a fascination for watches. I didn't make much money while in college, so I would spend money on watches around the $20 to $100 range at most. Once I graduated, in computer science, I got a nice job offer, so I decided to spend my first couple paychecks on a nicer watch, $4,000 range. I met my girlfriend and started dating her quickly around when I was 27. She's a social worker, so she's making around 40 k a year, I'd say. I'm making around 130 k We decided to move in with each other and we rent an apartment together. We split the bills evenly for rent. Place is not expensive, but I do generally pay for all our meals outside and do spend on random things like vacations for both of us, since I do make more. Here's our recent problem. I've wanted a watch that's generally around the 12 to 15 k range since I started working. When I mentioned it to my girlfriend a couple months back, she thought it was silly to spend so much. I ultimately decided to buy the watch two weeks ago. I was so happy when I got it, so I wore it and kept it on for several days. We hung out at her friend's place and had a barbecue with 10 people. We all wore masks and social distance. A friend of hers noticed my watch and got super annoying and judgmental for me buying the watch. It's a Rolex, so everyone knows the name and thinks they are super expensive. They asked how much it was, and my girlfriend said it's over 10k. A couple of her friends seemed really concerned that I just blew that much money on a watch. I made the mistake of blurting out that I have several more cheaper watches in the 5k range, after one of her friends asked my girlfriend why she'd allow me to spend so much money. Once we got home, my girlfriend started crying and screaming at me for embarrassing her at her friend's place, and asked me why I wore my watch there. I was confused. She said that everyone there makes around as much as her and obviously wearing such an expensive watch around them was tacky and snobbiness. I told her I disagree. I worked hard for where I'm at, and this watch to me symbolizes the effort I put in. It's personal for me. I don't go around telling everyone about my watch. I asked her what was the difference since one of her friends there was engaged and had a diamond ring on. My girlfriend had no answer, and now we haven't spoke for two days. So am I the a-hole here? Not the a-hole. You worked hard for your money and you like watches. Your girlfriend, though, is a whack job. She is the one who blabbed the price to her friends, not you. And then she cried and screamed at you? I get if she was annoyed or a bit embarrassed, but crying and screaming feels really over the top here. You need a better circle of friends who don't ask the price of things and who like nice things, as you do, rather than a jealous group who hold your success against you. Not the a-hole. 
Your girlfriend seems to be more concerned how this looks to her friends than what the situation actually is. Her telling you your hobby, collecting, is silly is a bit rude, especially since you make enough money to support it comfortably. One of her friends asked my girlfriend why she'd allow me to spend so much. You should have told her to piss off right there, and you don't need her permission to buy things with your own money. I wouldn't spend that much on a watch. However, good luck to anyone who does want to. Everyone sucks here. Your girlfriend for guilting you about how you spend your money, and you for talking about how much more you've spent on other watches in front of a bunch of social workers who make a third of what you do. Also, if you're going to stay with your girlfriend, you need to be tactful in discussing this. I deserve this because I work hard, is true, but it's also really lacking in empathy when you're talking to someone who makes so much less than you do, even though they also work really hard. I'm sure you don't think you work three times harder than your girlfriend. I'd also bet that how little they get paid for how hard they work and how little society values their work is a common complaint for social workers. My brother, 46 years old, has recently been released from prison in China after being caught for a hit-and-run accident there. He hit and ran. He was, and still is, heavily in debt with the banks from years of gambling. He refuses to settle this debt, has no cash, and definitely no credit card. He divorced his wife-to-be with his mistress, who is from China, and who he gave all his money to. Throughout his trial, I, 32 female, had a very hard time fighting his mistress, girlfriend now, since he's divorced, to get her to pay the compensation amount to the victim's family. In Chinese law, the perpetrator has to pay the victim's family in order to get a lighter sentence. He also left a bunch of issues unsettled from his business, which I had to attend to, because his company is set up in my father's name, and my father's old and retired, and didn't have the capacity to deal with those issues. In this time, I forked out immense amounts of time to tend to his issues, flying to China thrice to tend to matters there, liaisoning with the authorities, settling his business issues, etc., I've helped service his phone bill so as to keep his phone number, on his request, as well as pay his health care insurance, so that he wouldn't have to redo a health check again once he's back and risk having certain illnesses excluded. He used to pay his daughter's phone bills, and I took over that duty too, in an attempt to salvage whatever little relationship they had. My parents have bailed him out several times in the past on his gambling debts, and had forked out tens of thousands of dollars for his court case because the girlfriend claimed the money my brother gave her was all tied up in properties that she couldn't liquidate. But since he's been back, I've not heard a word of thanks from him. Instead, he's raised his displeasure at us having sold his Rolex watch to raise cash for a medical bill for one of his workers, which is the employer's obligation here. I'd asked him about selling the watch when it happened, but he's apparently forgotten all about it. His girlfriend also has not liquidated any properties to return the cash to my parents which she'd said she would. I am angry with him for being so ungrateful, but my parents are berating me for it. Instead, they want me to extend grace and forgive him because we are Christians. My dad, in particular, keeps asking me to help my brother with things, even things as simple as booking a cab ride, paying bills for a swab test online. Am I an a-hole for not wanting to help my brother any further? I do not want to have anything to do with him, and I do not want to talk to him. My parents, my dad in particular, thinks he's mending for the better, but I don't think so. He still thinks his girlfriend is the best and isn't just after money, blames his ex-wife for the divorce. He doesn't think it's because he cheated. Not the a-hole, dude. Being Christian doesn't mean everything just gets a pass. You should put your foot down, and once they have to clean this mess, or he has to clean it up himself, then they'll know. Not the a-hole. 1. He's 46. He will figure it out if not enabled. 2. In Asian culture, older siblings are supposed to take care of younger, not vice versa. 3. Save the money that you would spend on your brother, and spend it on your parents in their later years instead. Loving someone and forgiving someone doesn't mean you can't do it from a distance. It also doesn't mean you coddle them or do it all for them. It also doesn't mean you coddle them or do it all for them. It means you wish them well and give them the chance to learn and grow. For my father's 60th birthday in December, I wanted to gift him a Rolex. Unfortunately, you can't just walk into a store and buy a Rolex. You have to submit an expression of interest and hope they allocate you one. I submitted my expression last week 
anticipating that I would have to wait a year before my allocation. Luckily, I was assigned one almost immediately. Not wanting to wait, I decided to surprise my father with the Rolex when I saw him next, which was the Tuesday that just passed. Australia enjoyed a public holiday on Tuesday, and my extended family decided to use the occasion to celebrate my grandmother's birthday. When I arrived, I pulled my dad into a private room to give him the Rolex. In my excitement, I insisted he wear it immediately. My father is a rather private person and kept the watch to himself. It wasn't until two hours later did one of my cousins notice the watch and loudly exclaimed, Is that a Rolex? People reacted how you'd expect them to, a lot of oohs and ahs. All except my grandmother, who instead passively aggressively asked whether I would also be gifting her something of commensurate value for her birthday. Spoiler alert, I didn't. I bought my grandmother a $50 bottle of wine, which is in line with how close I am to her. Read, not that close. Her passive aggressiveness quickly escalated to outright aggression by accusing me of stealing her thunder. Frankly, if she had not thrown a hissy fit, people would have moved on from the Rolex after 10 minutes or so. It's just a watch. All in all, it wasn't that big of a deal. I left the room, my grandmother calmed down, and things went back to normal. My grandmother did refuse to acknowledge me for the rest of the day, however. A few of my relatives suggested that I should have chosen a different occasion to gift my father the Rolex. But should I have? Frankly, I feel my actions were rather benign. Am I the a-hole? Yes, the a-hole. You did steal your grandmother's thunder, and maybe your dad's too. He couldn't show it off in his own way. There's no reason for doubling up on occasions. Your grandmother's actions were over the top, so I'm not excusing that. But she did have a right to be upset. Yes, the a-hole. You used a family get-together as a way to monetize your perceived value of each relative, and played dumb when confronted with your choices. Your father had the good sense not to play into your little fantasy, but you forced the issue anyway by insisting he wear the watch. This wasn't a long-planned gift. It was a slashy, childish stunt that hurt people for no reason. I'm sure plenty of people in your family see you as a $50 bottle of wine. Not the a-hole. You don't owe anyone anything, and based on her entitled attitude, I'd have given her some basic chocolates at most. As for giving the watch, you didn't flash it in anyone's face, and can't help if people noticed. If not for her entitled dramatics, it would likely have lost its interest in minutes.